Hello, hello! Welcome back to Adventures with Dutsky in Alaska. Yeah. <clears throat> Today is the uh, June the twenty second. According to my watch, it's four forty five p.m. Four forty six, whatever. It's uh, the beginning of the season. They already opened it up for us for fishing. We went on our first fishing day was. Friday, yeah, Friday was our first day. We put out both nets out there. Um, I'm trying to get as many videos as I can of how we set up the nets. I didn't bring the bike clamp for my GoPro, so I'm gonna have to do a makeshift one. Either way, I'm still getting, you know, point of view with the headband and everything, so compile everything so you guys can see how it works out. The first day between both nets, um, we caught about hundred and some pounds each net so 250 to 300 pounds in total which was a good pretty good first day you know it uh, it surprised us a little bit because we didn't think it was, we were gonna get any fish um, the tide wasn't a big tide it was about a 15 footer um, I'll explain more how that works on later on the tides and everything it's different here um, <clears throat> but either way also we had our first fish the other day too. Even before we fished, we uh, one of the fishermen down here, he brought us up a couple of fillets and oh man, oh man, oh man, the fish is delicious. Mmm, the meat it's so bright red, just great. My mouth is watering. Actually, I'm pretty sure Alan is gonna get up in a little bit. He said he's gonna make fish for dinner again, so oh, yes. That's the cool thing about here. You can experiment with how y you can make your salmon salmon patties there's lemon dill there's lemon pepper there's mayonnaise and ranch with onions on it there's just salt and pepper <laughs> we, we have a little running joke saying it's kind of like uh, you know Forrest Gump with uh, with uh, the with Bubba and his shrimp you got shrimp this shrimp that <laughs> it's pretty funny because that's exactly how you can you know salmon this salmon that salmon this salmon that it's ridiculous but it's amazing oh the fish is good up here and for all of for those of you who I guess are lucky enough to get some salmon from me, <laughs> enjoy. I hope you enjoyed it by the time you see this, whatever the case, because uh it's so delicious. Either way. Uh our fishing first day was pretty good. Like I said, almost three hundred pounds for both nets. It was pretty fun, you know. It um we put on our monkey suits, which is chest high waders up to like around here and uh, they're all waterproof so we go into the water walking in the waves it wasn't that deep where our site is we we're probably the highest was probably around my belly button you know a little bit higher than that for the far the net because when we put our nets out we can we have two screw anchors right we can either swing in from the inside anchor we can put in between both anchors screw anchors or we can swing out from the outside anchor dig something in whichever way so uh the net i was on mine and jason's which is alan's net it's in the center and then sean and emily swung out on theirs so by the time we got to the end of ours we walked over to theirs and by the time we got to the end of their net all the way to the high water mark it was about you know about belly button a little bit higher which isn't a lot of water and it was a clear day there wasn't a lot of surf it wasn't a lot but we got enough fish for it right the beach is muddy as hell. So on our monkey suits, we have to, we cut out some old boots or old shoes, whatever, what have you, whatever fit over the waders. So that way the water comes out. There's no suction. Because when you step into that mud, sometimes that mud is shin deep. And if you get in, you, it'll just create a suction. Like there's no air in it whatsoever. So you'll get stuck. That first day I wore boots that didn't really fit me. The archers were cut a little bit higher than what I'm normal is, than I'm normally used to. So <laughs> I'm one of those like I try to get my right foot out and it just <laughs> just stuck. So I kind of <laughs> I kind of tripped and just fell onto my knees in the sand. Uh, luckily for me, the water obviously was only like ankle deep, but <laughs> I just started laughing. Like, Man, these things suck. I need to go change them. They're not mine. They're someone else's using the same sizes, but cut differently because of their feet. But either way, um, that first day was good, so we had to wait for Saturday for our announcement. We fished on Sunday, which was Father's Day. Uh, there was no fish. It was an offshore wind. So when it's an offshore wind, it means it's going from shore into the ocean. 
pushing the tide back, the fish will not come in if there's an offshore wind. So we look for an onshore directly coming in from the sea onto us and it's pretty much like an east, uh, east northeast wind in a sense, right? That And if it's raining on top of that, whew, bundles of fish. That's what we're waiting for. But the fish run, the majority, the bulk of everything, the season, will probably come in like around the 5th or 6th of July. Hopefully. You know, if it's sooner, even better. If it's later, it's going to kind of suck. But hopefully around that time. And that's when we're catching thousands of pounds of fish on each net. Sometimes we catch three or 5,000 pounds per day on each net on the tide. And that's when it's going to get fun, right? Um, but in between those days, like today, we were, I think, going to fish for tomorrow. They didn't announce us an opening, so we're going to have to wait for the next announcement tomorrow to see if we can fish. Uh, but, I mean, in between times that we don't fish, we have other things to do. We figure out other ways. We don't keep busy. For example, I mentioned on the last one of the last videos, I'm fixing nets. It's, there, it's net hanging the net. So... There's a cork line that floats on top of the water with the corks and everything. And then there's the lead line, which holds everything down. When the tide comes in, it opens up the webbing to catch the fish. So I'm learning how to connect everything on that, too. So if whenever I get my own permit, I know how to mend my own nets. Or, I mean, hell, like, Sean was showing me how to do it. And then, you know, he told me, he's like, hey, man, for helping me out. Because they're his customers. He, he, he makes a little bit of extra money up here, too. It's pretty cool. I didn't know that and I just I'm like I, I want to learn so okay I'll show you this and that and you know we finished a net for someone and he's like hey I'll just throw you some money for it like, oh shit cool you know paid learning <laughs> even better right uh, so I'm super excited for that I didn't expect it so thank you again Sean for that too publicly um, and and it's you know it'll pay off way better in the long run because I get to know how to do that and all the little nuances and little calculations and everything that goes with it i'm going to interview him so i can get to know more of that too because even if i don't get my own permit this year or next year hell i'll still come up here and do all these things but i'll be able to learn and do more because i know more and so it's in my benefit to know more so i can help the person that i'm fishing with right uh we've been doing that uh, we also got a huge tote a big plastic thing about <laughs> Maybe three feet by three feet square type thing, plastic tote, holes at the bottom. We filled it with gravel, put some dirt on top, and that's going to be like a little greenhouse type thing. So we have a little garden. They bring up people bring up seeds so they can plant little veggies, you know, lettuce and stuff. Uh, it's pretty cool. I'll try to get videos of that, but I don't know if it's. Uh, I think it's a little too late to plant some of the stuff, so we might not get too many things. Um, fixing trailers we had a couple of project bikes that we had to try to see what's happening uh, one of them was our own another one was for another fisherman down the beach so you know sean's really savvy about all these things too so this year i'm following him around to see what i can learn um and uh that's pretty much been going that's what we've been doing you know we've painted the house we have a roof to patch up probably today or tomorrow it's it was raining right now so the tar is not gonna stick nothing is um, so it's a pretty chill day today. Today was that soil. Um, me personally, I've been pretty much doing push-ups and sit-ups every day. To only 20 just to get something going because trust me, walking up and down that mud, let me put it this way for you. Each net from end to end is 300 feet. Okay, it's 100 yards. It's a football field length of net that we walk back and forth to several times okay and we have two nets so that's two football fields that we have to walk all the way to the end and back several times so that first day we fished let's see one two three four five six so we probably walked 600 yards worth of netting and that's not including where I park my bike at the top of the beach so it doesn't get muddy that's an extra bike I walked through all that thick mud, man, my f my legs were jello. <laughs> I mean, that meme, have you guys, you've, I'm pretty sure you guys have seen that meme from that movie, We Are The, what is it? I don't remember. Anyways, it's that guy, that kid's like, you guys are getting paid? Yeah, that's how I felt. My buddies were just like, man, my legs are in this and that. I was like, you guys still have legs? <laughs> I don't know. It was just something funny at that moment, I guess, but 
it hurt all right so my legs i'm working them out every day these boots they weigh like 10 pounds steel toe boots up and down these stairs my fitbit is going nuts i do way more than 10,000 steps a day i do like 15 sometimes it's pretty fun so i'm always active right and i'm always hungry because i'm always active i've been i've lost weight already too salmon is the best oh, anyways i'm rambling on um so we've been doing those things and that bear that i mentioned the last time is still around so he thinks there's still food around here too I've been seeing some tracks and it's always around that same area. Uh, he hasn't really bothered us at all, but we're wary he's around because once we start fishing at night and this little fucker's around here at 2 a.m. when we have to go to the, to the site at 3, we're going to run into the fucker. And he better run. I'm pretty sure he'll run. I just hope I don't actually run into him. There was a story told, too, that this guy ran around, was uh, walking back to his cabin, walked around a building, and he literally ran into a bear. <laughs> Both him and the bear just took off in opposite directions. Can you imagine physically running, like, just, just casual? Yeah, you bumped into somebody, right? You turn a corner, you're like, oh, hey, my bad, excuse me. But, like, it's a nice, it's, it's a hard hit, right? Just maybe bump heads. But imagine a six, seven hundred pound bear trying to walk around the corner. You walk into it. You oh shit! Take off running for your life. <laughs> the funny part is the bear did too. <laughs> uh, oh no! That also um, reminded me. I don't think I told you guys this story, and I looked through the videos to make sure. And uh, the second time I came around in 2015, there was a bear that came in from the surf. Now, come watch me in this one. On the North Shore line across the river, there's fishermen up there too. So the story is this. They ran a bear down from the North Shore down south. We're south of them, right? Here's the thing. So we're out there. It's a full moon. It's a full moon. We're out there fishing in the night tide. And this, in that year I was here, I was with um, a fisherman named John and then Grandma West. I was helping on her site. And then Alan and Sean were on Alan's site, right? So we see something floating down the river, and I'm like, what the hell is that? And we thought it was a runaway raft, you know, floating away, whatever. And I'm like, that's not a raft. It doesn't move like a raft. And then Sean's like, it's a moose. I'm like, I don't see antlers. I mean, uh, John, it's a moose. I was like, dude, I don't see antlers. That's a bear. He's like, bears don't swim. They are notoriously great swimmers, okay? Notoriously great swimmers. So I'm like, no, 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 no. That's a bear. I, I don't know what it is. So I get on top of my three-wheeler. Oh, I love that three-wheeler. I miss it. Uh, so I get on top of a three-wheeler and I look directly out and it's going, you know, the, the light of the moon is hitting the water. So it's going towards that. I turn around. I'm like, I hope to God that's a freaking UFO. We're in Alaska. Just joking around. I was like, I hope that's a freaking UFO. And as soon as I said that, I hear splashing in the direction of where it's at because my head's turned. And I look over and I see the thing stop under the moonlight and start heading towards me and it's splashing. I'm like, what the hell is that? So I kind of squint and I focus. And it's a freaking bear running over the surf. Now, again, mind you, it's a flat area beach. There's no, like, too many divots. So for him, it was on all fours. It was coming up to maybe his chest, his neck, right? Oh. I saw that thing running over the surf full speed. So again, we are 300 feet in between each side as well, 350 sometimes. And then it's windy, it's out there. So I get on my bike and I yell out, there's a bear, you know, at the top of my lungs. And then I see Alan kind of turn and I'm waving. And guys on the audio, see my expression. I am waving like crazy. Alan turns around. I see him look at me, kind of stop, look at me. And all I could yell is, there's a fucking bear. And I point out towards the surf like crazy like that. He turns around towards the surf. He kind of like does this little jump. I see him and Sean like look that way. They unhook the trailer, jump on their bikes. And they were freaking, they turned it on and it revved it. As soon as they turned it on and revved it, I unhooked my trailer. I told mom and John, I'm like, I'll be right back. I'm following them. And my three-wheeler was loud. So I gunned that thing. I started following everybody down the beach. So imagine this. It's like a, in a straight line pretty much. The bears first. And then you see Alan and Sean gunning it down the beach heading south. Luckily, there weren't that many fishermen out there at all. There was a good... Maybe seven or eight sites between us and finally someone down the beach. 
So they're gunning it down the beach behind the bear. I'm gunning it down behind them, and each one of us is probably a good 50 yards behind each other. We go around some of the netting, this and that, and then I see the bear kind of like head past them. Alan and Sean get into the dryer part because like there's a lot of mud. They didn't want to get stuck. The bear turns a quick left towards the inside of the beach while Alan, it looks like they were going to intersect and just, you know, Alan should would have T-boned the bear. And I'm doing the same thing following Alan. Then I see a pair of lights come up from the opposite side of the beach, and I hear them gun their, their four-wheelers. You can hear, whoa! It, it, the bear saw that guy and then just went over the dunes. Whoever that person was that saw the bear the opposite way chased that bear up the dunes, and that bear was gone. That's it. <laughs> that was one of the most intense times about the story with a bear for me so far. It was, I didn't, I mean, I didn't expect the bear to come in from the surf at all. I know they're swimmers and holy crap. So again, it's, they scared it off from the north side, came down to the south side, and that's when it ran into us. It was fucking crazy. But, uh, you know, that's it for the now, uh, for now. Stay tuned for the next uh, little episode and, uh, you know, I hope you guys like my adventures.